Hi everyone, I'm Ferd and welcome to my video. Today I'm working on a still MS-271 chainsaw. Now the problem is the things burn up. It needs a new piston and a new cylinder. The other problem is that the cost of the cylinder alone exceeds the amount of what the chainsaw actually costs brand new. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to restore the cylinder and put a new piston in it. This does work and if you do it right, this thing could last you for a really long time. So I hope you get something out of it and hope you enjoy the video. Now I kind of want to start off with the very last step of disassembling this chainsaw. The head is just sitting on there you got the four bolts at the bottom and then when you pull the head off of it the bottom part of the engine is sort of embedded into this plastic case so just leave that in there it's going to be a little difficult cleaning this gasket off but it comes out but it's a process of heating this whole thing up to about 300 degrees and and it'll fall out of there so just leave that thing alone leave it in there the main problem that I found with it was that it got hot I'm assuming that it didn't have any oil in the gas maybe and you can see where the rings have welded themselves inside that piston there now I'm gonna replace the piston in it the head was the cost of replacing the entire saw with a brand new one and it's just not worth doing that so what I did I used some 220 that's 500 but I used some 220 and I finished it off with that 500, but I went up there with my fingers where it was really rough and just sanded it. Now I couldn't get my, my big hand all the way up in there, so I came up with this little deal with a piece of plastic pipe and I taped a piece of sandpaper around it and I went up inside of it and just kind of sanded around it and I took my time doing it I probably spent a good hour sanding on this thing but lightly I didn't take much metal out of it. all I wanted to do was get those scratches out of it and make it a smooth surface for this new piston to go up in there now something that I want to share with you here is that the cylinder wall is plated similar to uh, chrome plating so to say but it's not chrome I don't know what the metal is that they've plated it with but you want to try desperately not to sand through that plating it's okay to leave those scratches in there so what I'm stressing to you is just make it smooth don't try to sand the scratches out of the cylinder some of them may come out but there's going to be some really deep ones that you're just going to have to leave in there. It won't hurt anything. This is all cleaned up. I got it sanded on the inside. I've washed it uh, with uh, Dawn dish soap and degreased it. And this thing's ready. I've already got the bearings off of it. And I want to show you how I did that. Now these things are on there pretty good and it's not because they were installed on there pretty good it's just over time they they seized themselves to the to the shaft but with the bearing on there I'm not going to put it all the way up on there you take a block of wood let's pretend this is this is my block of wood and you set your shaft on there like that and you take your air hammer or your hammer drill and you can put it right down there on the edge of that bearing and don't worry about 
tearing that thing up because it's probably done anyway like these were and just hammer it out of there and it comes right off bam and it's off of there that fast if you don't have the hammer drill or you don't have an air hammer there's other resources you'll just have to research it find out how you can get that bearing off of there if it needs to be replaced so what I want to do now is I want to get this piston off of here I'm not going to worry about this bearing in there that one don't feel bad okay to get this piston out of here on one side of it you'll see a little divot like right there the other side don't have it get your little pick get up under there and just pop that little spring out of like that and then you should be able to push your wrist pin out you have to give it a little persuasion here now before you get this all the way off of there you want to note which side is the exhaust so this is the position that I want when I put my new piston on it I want the exhaust side over here and it actually has the arrow pointing towards it like that so keep that in mind right there and we got a picture of the old pistons off of it we'll throw that thing out all right to put this thing together I'm using just regular two cycle oil and I got a little bit in this cup here I'm just going to put a little bit down on this bearing just a little bit I'm going to work that in the other bearing checked it it looks like it's okay I took the magnifying glass and looked at it it's not scarred or scratched up this looks okay inside here also to prep this you want to take some 220 and where your bearings came off of it I've already did this one so I don't want to really get contaminated but just sand that a little bit with that you don't have to go crazy you're just knocking the scratches off of it where the old one came off and then take your steel wool and polish it up a little bit that's going to make it a lot easier putting those bearings back on it so now we're ready to put our piston on it put it back on there the same way the other one came off we'll go ahead and slide that in here and that should be plenty enough oil for right now so we'll just set that up in there a little bit of oil on the wrist pin and just slide it through should go through fairly easy not it's not gonna be hard like that old one was coming out of there once you get it lined up we we'll put a little bit more on this end of it get it lubed up and then we're going to take our new clips and just install those on the side okay just to forewarn you when you're putting these clips in you kind of want to make sure that you got your thumb over them pretty good because if they take off on you they'll fly halfway across the freaking garage and you will never ever find it that thing will be sitting there looking right at you and you won't see it so be real real cautious putting these things in there because of that ah there it went there's probably an easier way we got our piston on there the next thing we want to do is work on the piston rings and before I put them on the piston these should both be the same I'm going to put
put a little bit of oil on my finger and just put it around the inside edge make sure that they've got a little gap in them kind of push it down in there just a little bit I want to make sure that it's flat I'm going to shine my light down there on that ring right there where the gap is supposed to be and if you could see that there's no gap that thing is damn near touching so I need to file some of that off of there okay I'm going to shine the light down inside and you can see from the backlight behind it over here on this side you'll see the gap and that's about a seven thousandths inch gap this one's fine now now let me check this other one okay let's put these bearings on there the the new bearings are going to come you have two of them and you got a little clip this goes over on that side there but if you look at these bearings they have a, not really a seal but there's like a a, a plastic thing that's kind of holding those bearings in place in there and we're going to want those facing outwards okay this is a, a 5 8 deep well socket and it's a rather long one and we want to contact the bearing right here in the center you can see that you don't want to you don't want to beat on the outside of this thing because remember that's plastic in there all right I got a block of wood to do this with I don't want to damage these ends so I'm gonna put that on there and just tap it on okay that one's that one's on there I'm gonna get a nut on this side of it so I can do this other side okay here's my flywheel nut screw that on there and got got her on her kind of flat so I got me a nice flat surface to work with a little bit of oil on there get my other bearing plastic part to the to the outside of it and just tap it in tap it in tap 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 and you fill it bottom out and there it is I'm going to take it for a test drive and make sure that it fits inside here perfect so we're ready to go I want to put the rings on the piston and I want to start it up into the cylinder the rings they have a little shape to them here on the end if you look on your piston there's a little pin down inside of it right there that little groove's going to sit upwards and fit in between that little pin there that keeps this ring from spinning around inside the cylinder get a little bit of oil on that and we're just going to work it down on there these are very very fragile so be careful putting them on there now if it was a bigger piston we'd be using a tool for this okay our rings are on there we're ready to put it up inside of the cylinder housing now some people will just use an eyedropper and put a drop here drop there i'll dump the oil on there like you see me doing there and, and really lube this thing up it makes it smoke a little bit when you first start it up but it doesn't hurt anything okay our arrow on the top of the piston is going to go to the exhaust side of it that's going to be over here 
So that's going to be facing this way up inside of your cylinder. You got a little groove going that way. So these pistons are going to compress as you push it down in there. I want to make sure that they're lined up with those those pins correctly and it shouldn't take too much effort to push this thing up in there if it does back it back out and check that those rings didn't turn and they're still up against those little pins in the piston okay now the first one's going in first one's in there just take your time work it in there and then there it goes this pistons going down it and it's in there it's in there take your time I have broke those rings before getting in a big hurry and trying to force it down in there just gently push we're ready to move on to the next step now the next thing we want to do is clean all the oil off of this surface and whatever you got available I happen to have some lacquer thinner especially right in this outside groove where our new seals are going to go in make sure all the old sealants off of it now we're going to take our new seals and then closed on the top you want this side facing out this way I'm going to put oil on the shaft by itself slide it down over that little lip on this side of it don't forget your little pin put that back down in there snap it on with your finger we're going to use some high temperature RTV sealant got that on there and we can go ahead and just seat that down on there like that this is already all cleaned up uh, I just blew it off with an air hose washed it up with some Dawn dishwashing soap it's not going to take much just go right along that line down there and make sure you get this thing real clean All right, here's four bolts that came out of it. And you'll notice one of them has a sleeve on it and it's a little bit longer. That's going to go right there. These are a number 27. Okay, I don't want this flopping around. I'm going to flip this over instead of flipping this over. There's your exhaust right here and it's going to come out through the handle. I left the oil pump in there so that's kind of a little distraction but I'm just going to kind of fish it down there through that. You can see I'm going to just push it up in there like that. And it's a pretty snug fit. Now I can start my bolts don't want to cross thread these so one of the old tricks is is you can kind of turn it the screws backwards and you'll hear a click hear it and that usually indicates that it fell down in there so I'll turn that back there's my click that's for you younger kids out there that are just learning how to put a bolt on. <laughs> there are some tricks to it. There are some tricks to everything just about. And I wished I knew them all. I'd share them all with you. Oh, 
Okay, I'm going to end this one here. But if you want to see more of how to assemble the MS-271 chainsaw, I'm going to post a video a little bit later on that one. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button. Help me grow my channel. Have fun, and let's see if this thing's going to start up. All right, let's see. I don't have the blade on it yet. And I have already started the thing, to be honest with you. But it started up like two poles. That was maybe about five, ten minutes ago. So, let's see what happens. Put a little choke on it. Sounds good, starts up easy, and uh, one hell of a project.